Welcome to episode 149 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today we're going to talk to someone who has been through wildfires and pandemics and a real life data hostage situation. We're making our way through the fog of life and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So originally I recorded this podcast for my automotive state of the union content. However, the conversation, although I'm speaking with an auto dealer, David Long, one of my dearest, dearest friends and uh, one of the leader that I respect incredibly, the conversation actually migrated away from the automotive industry. And we just started talking about people and you would not believe the challenges that this organization, this business, this dealership had been through in such a short 12 month period of time. And David is going to talk about, we, we both talk about how to lead teams through stress and adversity and he tells some pretty incredible stories about how people showed up for one another day in and day out so from here we're just going to roll right into the dealers pushing back podcast episode so it's going to go from this into that conversation just so you have a little idea of the context if i'm talking about dealerships or it sounds a little different that's why but i know that you're going to really learn a lot from this I really learn a lot from David in general. So lean in, pay attention. And I think this is a great way to start to round the end of the year and think about how we can show up for one another, regardless of how tough the situation is. So here's my interview with David Long from the Dealers Pushing Back podcast. The ash is falling out of the sky like snowing in northern Michigan. And I look out my window uh, and people are just going about their jobs like impervious. So I'm here today with the one and only David Long, the executive general manager of the Hansel Auto Group in the San Francisco Bay Area. Outside, yep, Northern so, California. So there's a little bit going on in that area, and we'll, we'll get into that. Um, one thing I'd like to talk about, and I think dealers will be uh, served well to hear, is what it's like to lead people through transition and through crisis. And I think you're the perfect guest for this because you have had a disproportionate amount of trials and crises, and, you know, from natural disasters to quasi-terrorist attacks to COVID that we're all dealing with and so on and so forth. So um, I, I want you to talk about some of those things and how you led your people through them, because I think somebody that's had this many challenges over the past year really can start to take the excuses away from some people that maybe didn't have it quite so bad. And it's not like to make, and I know you're a very humble person, so it's not like to make you... Uh, to be like build you up so you got through all these things but it really I think it's relevant to the conversation which is why I'm asking you to see how how we got through these so um, can, can you just tell us a little bit about the group sure and then tell us about the things you faced over the just the last 12 months sure so Hansel Automotive is in right outside of Napa a place called Santa Rosa and Petaluma California which is Northern California beautiful oh yeah it's beautiful just gorgeous area um, we have eight dealerships. Uh, we represent uh, seven different brands, so we're pretty diverse. Uh, we've been in business for over 50 years, and I'm fortunate enough to run part of it. Amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so executive general manager, what, what are your duties exactly? Or it's probably not exactly because it's such a big title. It's probably more of a generally speaking, what do you spend your generally. time doing? <laughs> Overall operations for uh, six rooftops, um, and that's pretty much it. So the people look to you. Like you get all the hard problems. I get all the opportunities. <laughs> you get you get all the challenging opportunities. I'll, I'll rephrase it that way. All the all the opportunities that no one else can figure out how to take get make their way to your desk. Right. It's so <laughs> neat not to have to have all the answers. <laughs> I got a great team. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of a team, you the company has an amazing culture. They do. Um, you know, I was a part of some of the Zoom calls that you put together. We'll get to those in a second. So I was able to witness firsthand mm -hmm. the, the mentality and even the demeanor of the people on the calls. And I saw employees. I saw families and spouses and kids. And it was a really special thing and really indicative, I think, of a leadership who cares about their people and who was doing a very good job leading, leading their people through transition 
leading their people through crisis in a way where people were still excited and motivated to show up yeah. when every outside every outside indicator would really lend them to want to like hole up shut down so um tell us about some of the things that you have just let's talk about the crises and the things that have happened over the last year like, let's go back a year okay so uh, you know it's interesting too because i didn't know i had some of the skill sets to sort of lead through some of these crises. but about a year ago fires just ravaged northern california uh, people lost homes, uh, some people lost lives, fortunately nobody on my team. Uh, and then right on the heels of that, we had a cyber attack that just shut us down. It was, it was the most bizarre thing I had ever been through. Like a it's cyber almost, attack, literal, literal like hostage situation? Yeah. hostage and hostage and paying people. And Did like, you pay in Bitcoin? We didn't pay in Bitcoin, no. <laughs> but, but, but we're talking literally like they locked you down. Locked us down. And they then had you the had a only keys to operate our business and the only way we could get our keys back to get our data back was to pay the ransom and so so you had to probably bring in somebody to help you with this we insurance did. companies you know, or negotiator a right. it was like right it was like something you see in a movie it was just right there's netflix special about this correct okay so correct. you went through that so your business was shut down because of a hostage data breach and you don't know well so personal information was all secure which was great yeah but you really don't know if you if you write the big check are they going to give you the keys back right so it was touch and go it's like i'm trusting you criminal (laughs) to be honorable wait a minute Hmm. i'm going to trust you i'm going to give you the money please let me have the keys back yeah same time (laughs) no it wasn't one of those swaps (laughs) yeah yeah, same time i don't know you (laughs) so we did that got through it uh took the advice of you know our hostage negotiators and and when we got through that i thought Breathe the sigh of relief, right? And then, boom, went to NADA. Things were looking so bright. Oh, and yeah. Then, a screeching halt in the middle of March, right? To shut down, um, had to furlough 70% of our staff, um, and then sort of redesign the way we brought people back and the way we did business. And then as we started to eke our way out of that, which was super interesting, uh, the fires came back. Um, yeah, in a major way. In a major way. Uh, so I have this, I still have this image. I'll never lose this image. It's 108 degrees on my phone, right, on my weather app. So it's like a literal, legit 108 degrees outside. Not because of the fire. Right, right? It's, it's just because it's summer. 108 degrees right. outside. It's summer. The air quality index, which goes from zero to 500, is in the two 300 range. Not good, right? It's should purple. be spending a lot of time out, right? <laughs> it says dangerous. There's ash <laughs> fall. 500, this. like you're dead? I, think like. You, I don't even think you can consume the air, right? <laughs> <laughs> the ashes falling out of the sky like snowing in northern Michigan. And I look out my window, uh, and people are just going about their jobs like impervious to everything wow. that was going on. It, it's just, it just screams volumes to the, the spirit and the resiliency of the people that work with us. Well, why? I think everyone listening is like, how do I get those people, right? They're normal people. They're normal. But they're motivated to do that when they didn't have to. And why do you think that is? Well, it all started, I think, with our owner, right? Henry Hansel, his son, Justin. <clears throat> I've been in the business for four decades. When I say decade, I can't, I can't even say you decades. Did, right? You that's, did stutter a little. It's like almost 40 years, right? <laughs> it came out a little slow. <laughs> it was, it's hard to spit out, <laughs> right? But in all the years, I've had two dealers in my entire life, and that was the one I started in California with, which was DGDG, and now this one. Absolutely beautiful human beings that know how to run a business, yep. know how to get the most out of our people, and know how to treat people with care, kindness, and respect. So it's, it was easy for me just to come in with my love for people and just sort of plug that in because they were already there ready to go. That's why it was a fit. It was a great fit. So you're saying when you care about the people and they know it, they'll knock down a wall for you. I think so. I think so. But it's, it's, I think there's every day needs to be evidence of the care. Right, it's very, per- very, very perishable. They cannot know it. They have to feel it. There's a big difference between hearing it, knowing oh, for it, sure. versus feeling it. No, I mean, that's, that's a, a real key point of relationships. Like, if everyone accepts and receives a message of care different ways, right? Love languages. Yeah. Right? You, sh- you saying it, for some people, might mean a lot. For other people, it might not mean anything, mm-hmm. right? But if you buy them a Coke, right? We talked about this today, right? Right. The ROI on that 75 cents you said, because you know, they like Pepsi or Coke or whatever you bought it for them, mm-hmm. right? That act of service <clears throat> is just the ROI on that is 
not infinite, but extraordinary into the sense that you have people outside in 108 degree weather going about their business while it's raining ash like a dystopian zombie movie. You know, I, you just made me think of something. Rent is due every day. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? Quote? I have. Yeah. <clears throat> well, rent on emotional deposits is due every day. For sure. And the bank account is empty the next day. And I, I think that's a human condition, right? The yeah. fear, the insecurity, the anxiety. I think if we're not continuing to have the message and fill people up so they feel safe. Who was it today that gave <clears throat> the, the fire hose analogy? That was me. It was you. Give us the fire hose analogy. And the um, pool. It, well, it's I call it mm-hmm. the emotional pool, right? You got to fill up the emotional pool. What, what what's dawned on me through this all these crises is that pool has this gigantic hole in the bottom of it that empties every single day. Right. So it's almost like a bank account with sixty four thousand seconds in it. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen that. Uh-huh. Like at the end of the day, it's empty. The right. next day, every to, single day, fully depleted. It's fully depleted. So I can't use yesterday's emotional deposits and spend them today. That's right. They were spent yesterday. They're gone. It's Amazing. like a reset button gets pressed. So for dealers, so you, you had a really unique thing that you did when COVID hit and everyone all of a sudden was relegated mostly to their homes or very few right. people could come in. Right. Um, can you talk about what you did with the Zoom meetings? Because you just signed up for a Zoom account, right? You, didn't, you weren't a Zoom expert. I was no Zoom expert. So I, I was scared. Right. I was fearful for, for the people that worked with us. I was fearful for the single mom that's not going to have a job that I have to furlough. Like I was, I was full of anxiety for the people that were impacted. Mm-hmm. The best way that I know how to help somebody through a crisis is presence, right? To be there. We couldn't be there because we had a shelter in place and nobody could come in. We were essentially closed. Stuck, right. So the best way for me to, in my opinion, to be the leader and be there was to have a daily, not every other day, not once a week, but a daily 3 p.m. Zoom call, and I call it the eddy. I don't know if you've ever done whitewater rafting, but if you're going down a river and you need a break, you move over to the side of right. the river. Yep. That's called the eddy. Right. It's a peaceful little spot in the water. It's peaceful. It's calm. No so moving water, right? No rapid. Take I mean, a breath. Take a sip of water. yourself and figure out how to have self-care, how yeah. to take care of the people around you. So we had that eddy every day at 3 o'clock. And then I, this thing caught fire, and I got people like you <laughs> to join, and I had some really amazing guest speakers that just poured into the team knowing that the next day they would need some more, what I call uh, an ecosystem of positivity, right? Because there's so much negative coming out. Oh, yes. Every angle, and and even with the election, right? Oh, it's it's nonstop. It's just nonstop. So how do you con- how do you continue to have an ecosystem of positivity? You have to outweigh the negative. It's right. the only way I know how to do it. So that's what these three p.m. Zoom calls were. They're all positive, all love, all nurturing, all how to do self care, all that we were going to get through it. Right. The whole person. Just the whole, the whole not, person. Not the tactics of running the business. No. But really, the it's not the tactics <clears throat> of running a business. It's really the practice of nurturing y- your spirit. The honestly. practice of a human condition, right? Yeah. Like work was only one function, one part of the 3 p.m. Because everything, calls. right? Because everything else comes out of that. Mm-hmm. So, what would you say to dealers who might be in a position where they hear that story? They, that sounds great. I can't do a Zoom call every day, or I can't do this, or I can't do that. Um, what would you say to them? as far as how you would encourage them to move a little bit deeper toward the result of g- having the people out there in 108 degree weather with the terrible air raining ash. Like, mm-hmm. how do they take a step forward toward that? You know, I think everything, it just starts, right? You just have to start somewhere. If you're gonna eat the elephant, do you start at the elbow or the mm-hmm. ear? It doesn't really One matter. One bite at a time, just, it's all gotta go. So it's all gotta go. So I think little things, little tools, I have this new tool belt that I wear, not literally, but figuratively. And they're tools that I didn't have pre-COVID. Yeah. So one of the tools is a little video, send it to the husband that he can show the kids. And, you know, Joe, you did a remarkable job yesterday. I saw the way you cared for that customer. So proud to be a teammate of yours. Send it. What was that? 11 seconds, right. 15 seconds. Right. Joe goes home, shows his kids, look at, yeah. they're proud of me. I'm doing a good job. The wife, same thing. And I think that those sorts of deposits, handwritten thank you cards. I mean, yeah. those are pretty outdated, but I do them every single week. I do. Right? I did them for this event. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, technicians. It's cool just, again. It's so cool. Yeah. Right? So finding all these things on what I would call my emotional tool belt 
to be able to take and use any given day, any given time. So that's what I would tell yeah, start. a dealer. Just start. Right. Like you, start by writing an email. Start by sending a handwritten note. Start by doing one little video. Just do one thing. Video. If you're watching this right now, just do one thing. Buy that Coke that we talked about. Turn this off and do one thing. Just do one thing. And then do one thing tomorrow. And just Groundhog Day. Yep. Start over and do another ne the nether next right thing. And I think you'll look up and find people walking in 108 degree heat with raining ash. I do. To keep the company going. Mm -hmm. David, Remarkable. Spending any amount of time with you is always encouraging to me. I know the people that watch this are going to be encouraged. So just thanks for being so open handed with your time flying all the way out here to be a part of this event. Um, I came out here because I care about you and I care about what you're doing for the industry and I know you're leading with your heart and I don't know if anybody's told you lately but you're making a huge impact a significant impact not on just me but all the people that I come in contact with that are appreciating what you do I just want to say thank you it means a lot to hear that keeps me going so I think it doesn't matter what industry you're in, or you might not even be in for-profit or not-for-profit, or just a group of people trying to get something done. Leadership is leadership is leadership, and humanity is humanity is humanity. People respond when they know they are cared about. It's very simple. And when you cultivate that feeling and that community, you should never be surprised that people show up for one another, regardless of the situation. So. All that being said, I hope that you stay positive. I, I hope that you stay outward focused so that you can care for the people around you in a selfless way like we just learned from David. And I hope that you have an amazing week. I hope you have an amazing holiday season. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. In just a couple days, we're all going to be around a tree opening presents, enjoying family. So I hope you enjoy the things that are most important to you in this season. And I will talk to you next week for the finale of the Clarity Compressed podcast for 2020. We're out of here. One more week. I'll see you then. You just gotta love some.